Dear subscribers, as you know, we shared many information for you, and we are studying very hard to find current news for you. However, I cannot use this channel for future. Please follow our new channel called As Daily News Report and watch our video to support us. Link in description. Also, you can reach the video we shared on Daily News Report by clicking on the top right button. We highly recommend watching, subscribing and sharing. We will continue to share some news on this channel where we take precautions against some situations for future. Thank you for supporting us. We have no inflation in the economy whatsoever and they're, they're just hoping to get it one day. <laughs> Sorry to start off laughing, but I think that anyone who is listening to this, uh, who who transacts in dollars, uh, could vouch for the fact that we are seeing inflation uh, everywhere. So um, no, uh, the, the, there's a big problem ahead. There's no doubt about it. Um, the Fed, as we all know, uh, has been on a money printing binge, uh, adding digits to a screen now. Uh, uh, off the Richter scale for a decade, and 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 we're going to run into an issue where we have all of these extra bills and whatever form they're in, uh, chasing the same amount of goods at one point, uh, and, and we're in for a wallop here. The Fed can't stop this from happening. Uh, it's a, it's an impossibility, and I think they realize that. So um, again. What do we know about the Fed? They never get anything right. And, I, and I'm not just pulling that out of a hat. I want people to do their own research. And, and they're going to mess this up too. Um, they, when they instituted, uh, you know, buying everything uh, that they possibly could to keep everything propped up, they never had an exit plan. They never thought about how this would unwind. Um, and so I, I think they've really pushed themselves into a spot that they they can't get out of at this point and it, again it just goes back to how this is going to end and it's going to end very badly at one point don't know when don't honestly care when just know it's going to happen it's gone on way longer than i think anyone would have expected it to go uh and these are just cycles you know with these boom and bust cycles they last about 10 years or so uh it's been about that long since the last meltdown uh, and we're due. Um, there's there's no doubt about it. And um, this issue with uh, with bonds lately uh, is uh, is rattling the markets. But I think uh, uh, there's an a, extraordinary effort right now by the by the Federal Reserve, by the banks, uh, to keep rates suppressed, despite the fact that we keep hearing that they want to raise rates. Every time rates go up, what do they do? You start getting into the bond market and buying them up, push the rates lower. Uh, every, now, it seems like the 10-year the, the uh, being at 3% is, is a line in the sand. We got over that, and uh, stocks started to suffer. Now, today was epic. Uh, they got in there, and they bought those bonds like they were the last ones to ever be had in the history of the world. Um, and this did push the 10-year DAC back below. 3% and uh, we had a nice rally on Wall Street. So let's think about that. We have a big rally in the bond market and a big rally in the stock market at the same time. It's kind of interesting. I have a live chart of the bond market on my website, traderschoice.net. And uh, if anyone was paying attention to that today, they could have watched in real time how this worked out. When the Fed, when the Fed, that's who it is, uh, and the banks were buying up those bonds, um, pushing uh, the yields lower, what did that do? That caused stock, stocks to rise. And then as soon as the bonds stopped uh, being bought, stocks started to fall. Uh, then they got in there and started buying more. Stocks went higher. Um, this, is, this is what they've done here. And in their efforts to keep uh, this mechanism going, the charade, uh, they've managed to push the yield curve nearly flat. And that is a big problem um, moving forward here. Um, the last two times we've we've seen this, 
uh, both ended up in uh, catastrophes for the financial markets. 2008 and the time before that was the dot-com bubble where we had valuations where they are and a yield curve, which is almost non-existent. So this problem is coming down the pike, no doubt about it. So a flattening or a, what inverted yield curve, is that a signal for a recession? Well, generally, yeah, that's that's been the case. When we've seen a yield curve flatten out like this, that means people don't want to uh, be borrowing for the long term like that. Now, we've seen this again uh, at the top of the last two bubbles, exactly the same thing. So they can tell us, our politicians can tell us all they want, but the evidence is everywhere. Um, I don't know about where you live, but where I live, uh, stores are closing all over the place. There's malls that are empty. Uh, it's an incredible thing to see. Um, but they're telling us, uh, you know, they're trying to convince us that everything is just just great. Uh, no, it, it, it's not just great. We, we've, again, um, we don't learn from the past um, and it's not just a matter of learning. This is the cycle that is deliberately run by the banks, by the Federal Reserve. They, um, this is how they create wealth on a grand scale by inflating and then deflating bubbles. That's all they do. The Fed is a deliberate serial bubble blower. And it, it's that's just the way it is. And, and uh, unfortunately, most people get caught on the wrong side of that when it all comes down. And we have a market that is rigged. It is fake. Um, there's no price discovery mechanism behind any asset whatsoever because the Fed is still behind a, a rigging of the bond market along with other world central banks. And being that everything derives value from what's going on here in the bond markets around the world, uh, how could the price action of anything be real? It's not. So we're, we're in fantasy land. So is the Fed trying to keep the market up or are they trying to crash it? Because last time they raised the rates, this was prior to 2008, they raised the rates and everything started to fall apart and they had to you know, start lowering the rates. They're doing the same exact thing again, but I, I guess this time it's a little different because they have, what, four and a half trillion on the books. They're trying to unwind that and we have a huge amount of debt and you know a lot of problems. So what are they trying to do? Are they Are they trying to bring the system down or they're just trying to keep it you know on life support i think they're going to try to keep it on life support through the midterm elections um because the illusion must be kept real um uh, that the economy is doing great and trump is the greatest president in the history of the world they need they need to keep this going uh and after that you know who knows if it will Every time the market tries to do its one and only job, and I'm referring to the bond market right now, uh, and the one and only job of all these markets is to determine fair value. Whenever the market tries to determine that fair value, uh, it gets interrupted. And, and it's an amazing paradox. It really is because we keep hearing out of their mouths, oh, we're going to raise rates three times. This is the Fed. Oh, no, maybe four times. But every time rates try to normalize or try to, you know, uh, Determine a fair value. They, some mysterious entity gets in here and starts buying up those bonds to make sure rates stay down. Um, but you know, I mean, we have all these other issues going on here. We have, you know, right now uh, a, a housing bubble which is going to fall in some pressure now with uh, with those rates rising. The whole LIBOR issue. I mean, we have issues. We have coming at us from every different direction. It's just a matter of which one of these things is going to really break first. And then I think it's going to start a cascade of events that I do not believe that the central banks are going to be able to control. But for now, I think they want to try to keep it propped up. They want to, uh, uh, through the through the midterms at least, and and then we'll, we'll see how that it plays out uh, after that. So... Um, with that said, I mean, you know, we just have to understand that this literally is like Disneyland. It's fantasy land. It's not real. Um, it, it's not on the other mental chart. Nothing that we're seeing here with regard to any aspect of the market. There is no price discovery behind anything because the Fed and other world central banks are still controlling the markets. They are managed. There's no free market anymore. 
So what about the dollar? Um, I had a guest on uh, Spotlight, and he says he thinks there's going to be one more rally in the dollar, and then the dollar is just going to crash, and it's going to crash and burn. Uh, what do you think? Where do you think the dollar is headed? Well, where the dollar has been headed now for 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 years, um, it's it's going low. It continues to lose value. Uh, they're gonna see. Look, the issue is the the, the system. The system is a, is debt based, as you well know. It needs to continually borrow cash from the future in greater and greater amounts just to sustain where we are. More cash has to be brought into existence, uh, and they're going to keep printing. Uh, they're going to keep adding it to a digital screen um, into oblivion. And and every single time they do this, when they introduce more currency, that currency has to get value from some place. So it steals a little fraction of value from the currency of every other bill that's in existence. So there's no doubt about it. This can't stop. So with that said, of course, we are, we, we are marching down a path here where they are determined to kill the currencies. Um, and what they're going to do, how are they going to fix it at one point? Don't know. Don't I, I think uh, I think we spoke about this before. They're going to have to come out with a new something or other. I don't know what. But what I, I, could, I what I do know is it's not going to be in our best interest. We're all going to suffer for it. And um, it's a sad thing. It really is. Now, going back many years, uh, you talked about the economy crashing. Um, and I just wanted to get your view on the economy today compared to years ago. Uh, are we headed for the same type of crash where, you know, maybe the credit markets are going to freeze up like in 2008, where we're going to need bailouts? Are we headed for the same exact type of crash that we were many years ago? Worse, obviously. I think much, much worse because the distortions are are much, much worse than they have ever been. Um, and I've been saying for the longest time that we are going to end up in a situation where we're going to have credit markets freeze up again. There's going to be no lending. Um, people will not have access to things. I mean, look, here's, here's how I look at it at everything. I always try to assume the worst. Um, because if it doesn't get to the worst, well then I'm better off. But if we look at things from a possible worst case scenario and we try to adjust from that perspective and we try to again look through that prism, we could end up in a in a situation that would make 2008 um, look like a walk in the park. Um, big time here. Um, because the distortions are so much greater than they have ever been. The Federal Reserve has deliberately, deliberately created an environment of risk. All these world central banks have done that uh, to reinflate a, uh, uh, stock market bubbles around the world, uh, to reinflate a housing bubble. Um, the 2008 event was simply the markets trying to do uh, their own one and only job, and that is to determine fair value. Um, and what they've done instead now is inflate the mother of all bubbles, and that is the debt bubble. And without the ability to continue to borrow, once that bubble pops, we're going to end up with a resource issue. Um, that means we will no longer be able to borrow anymore to sustain the current environment. So that has the potential to unfold on a biblical scale. Uh, when people are no longer able to ac access basic resources, well, you know, just put two and two together and you can see where we have the potential to go. Um, and, you know, it comes down to this. Who will be held responsible? In my opinion, nobody. Uh, the politicians, no. Bankers, absolutely not. And um, they're gonna they're gonna introduce something else and tell tell us all it's for our benefit. Oh, we have to do this because this is this is what the system has done. They're gonna blame the people, of course. Meanwhile, it's them that have 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 twisted this system. I think after two, in 2008, the sad sad thing here. When the credit markets froze up in 2008, they had to do something, in my opinion, um, and that was QE1. When they continued with QE2 and then Operation Twist and everything else that's going on till this day, um, that, was, that was when things really um, 
got crazy. They didn't need to do that. I think what they should have done, it's, you know, just in retrospect here, unfreeze those credit markets and let things work out for themselves. Let the free market work. Let it do its job. So once they would have got money flowing again, yeah, people got real hurt. They got hurt. They lost money, their investment plans, but it would have been a real market. The market would be nowhere, nowhere near where it is right now. The debt would be nowhere where it is right now. But they, someone over there went literally loony off the deep end and said, let's just do this. Let's just buy everything in sight. Let's buy all those bad mortgages. Let's reinflate the housing bubble. So now those mortgages will be worth something so we can dump them off onto the market. And then once we do that, We'll let the whole system crash again. Look, this is just a scheme uh, of truly epic proportions to fleece the people. That's all it is. And so it's a, and this isn't nothing unique. It, this is going to be the worst. But this has happened over and over and over again in the past. And people think their current situation is like, oh, there's never – well, although this is unique in its own right that – We've never seen a situation where world central banks have created a financial Frankenstein like this before. It's always the same. Um, so people just need to get used to it. This is the cycle of the system, and it's engineered to work in that way. Now, I mean, back in 2008, since you mentioned that, um, weren't they trying to help their friends and, and their buddies like in AIG and all the banks and everything else? Weren't they doing it to help all those corporations so they personally wouldn't lose their investments? <laughs> Absolutely. Uh, Bear Stearns, Lehman Brothers, these, these, were, these were sacrificial lambs. That's all they were. Uh, they had to show the people something. Look what we did, everyone. Look what we did. You know, Bear got absorbed by J.P. Morgan, Lehman, whatever happened over there. I mean, but but they had to get one. They had to set that up like that. Look what happened. The Lehman Brothers been around for a hundred and some years. Oh, we let them fail. You know, they're going to be the fall guy. But all, all, all that happened is all those assets that got absorbed by other companies. That's all that happened. And you're right. So they 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 put on a show like they always do. For the people, look what we did. Oh, Wall Street paid for it. Oh, oh, yeah, they did. Oh, of course they didn't. And look at it now. Look where we are now. Everything's being reinflated. And I'll tell you the biggest criminal act, in my view, with regard to talking about AIG and all this stuff, is very sad. We all know what happened to people. Good friends of mine say, happened to them. One of my very best friends, as a matter of fact, got wiped out, uh, bought at the top of the housing bubble, and um, – you know, people lost their homes. Uh, the, these were called toxic assets at that time, remember? Well, they're not so toxic anymore. Uh, they, they, they did succeed in reinflating a housing bubble. So now those toxic assets are actually valuable. So now they're going to sell these back onto the market for profit. And all those people that lost their homes uh, were kicked down to the street, uh, had their lives crushed. Well, you know what they get? They get nothing. So you're absolutely right. This was a scheme. They tried to, you know, look, what is in a scheme? It's all a scheme. And, and you just got to understand that's just the way it is. And there's nothing that we can do about it. And, and I mean absolutely zero. So what we do is we try to take the system, understand that it's fake, understand that it's rigged, and try to make it work for, for ourselves. Um, I, I, th that, that's I try to weaponize this market against them. That's why I sit here all day long uh, and, and, and in, in front of my computer screen trading these markets. Um, most of the times I get it right. Sometimes I get it wrong. But uh, that's just the way it is. I'm not going to let these people win. Um, it's just not happening. Do you think when we enter this collapse scenario, do you think the U.S. will remain the reserve currency of the world, or do you think it's going to change into a different type of currency? They're going to do whatever they have to do to keep the uh, the Federal Reserve, I think, the, or the U.S. dollar uh, as a reserve currency that we fought wars to get here. Um, we continue to fight wars to keep the dollar supported to find reasons to borrow more um, budgets that are just that make no sense uh, are put in front of us. And we're told that all oh, the president tells us, oh, I had no choice. 
uh, bombings uh, that, that we shouldn't be involved in other countries. This is all the mechanism to keep the dollar propped up. If there is a threat to the dollar, uh, we will just enter into another war. More blood will be spilled. Um, more innocent lives will be lost, and, unfortunately. Um, but that's just the way it is. Um, we have very little control. It's really the truth. Uh, it's a shame, but but that's unfortunately the way the system is now. So we can either you know succumb to it or try to make it work for us if we understand it. And I think that your listeners, uh, yourself obviously, uh, has a good handle on this. And um, there's no way to prevent what's coming. And it's always the same story. It's not like this is any different, not like we haven't seen it before, although this, the magnitude of this is worse. Yeah, but it's always the same thing. So knowing that, knowing that, and these are facts, anyone can, you know, with, with the access to the Internet, if, they've, if they were born yesterday, uh, can look into the past cycles of how the market works, and you'll see there is a pattern here. Um, and it, it just goes on for as far back as you want to go. It just doesn't stop. Now, for those people who are looking to, you know, protect themselves from this crash, from what, what's going to happen, th there's two sides now. There are some people that say, oh, yeah, gold and silver. And a lot of the people that are in the cryptocurrency market saying, oh, no, gold and silver, they th you don't even go into that. It's a waste. Go into cryptocurrency. W what's your take on that? Well, you know, just before we got on air, I told you I was uh, buying some more crypto here. I, I, have, I own crypto, no doubt about it. I own gold. I own silver, too. You can't be in any one thing. No, 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 no one. I mean, I still believe the best places to be, uh, and, and you, you know what I'm going to say is gold and silver, hard assets. They've proven to be sources of value, stores of value for thousands and thousands of years. Nothing is going to change that ever. Uh, so, you know, bet against the debt, become your own central bank. These have been my themes since day one. I still stand by that. Uh, regardless of what they do to it, they suppress it, they twist it. We have the London gold fix. It's, it's an incredible thing that's even allowed to go on. But, you know, the price of gold is not real. It's fixed every day. It's, it's, an, it's There's no free market there. There's no price discovery mechanism whatsoever. They explode the debt uh, greater and greater every single day. You can uh, watch it on the debt clock. Uh, meanwhile, uh, the gold, the price of gold and silver remains remains relatively stationary. Um, uh, imagine what the real price would be uh, based in dollars here. Uh, you know, it, it's just a crazy situation. So, uh, what do you do? You you, you got to be diversified. You got to be into a bunch of things that you can't ever put all your eggs in one basket. And um, but I still feel those those are the best spots to be. I like I said, you know, I own cryptos. I I believe in them. Um, I have pretty nice investments there. I got really nice investments in metals, and uh, and then I just trade these markets. That's what I do. Why do you think the central banks? I'm just going to come back to this for a sec. Why do you think they keep demonizing cryptocurrencies? I mean, you hear Christine Lagarde, you hear John Williams, the Atlanta Fed president, saying, "Oh, cryptocurrencies can never become a currency. It's impossible. It can never replace the fiat system. Criminals use it. Terrorists use it. Why are they harping on this so much?" Yeah, like criminals and terrorists don't use uh, you know fiat currency. But well, because, you know, look, it's decentralized. They can't. They can't control it. So without the, the control is what gives them power. They dictate to us what we use or what we have to use to transact. It's an incredible amount of power that they have um, by this mechanism. So they don't want to give that up. Uh, we've seen uh, cryptos get whipsawed pretty darn bad um, as, the, as they've been trying to uh, – take advantage of that too. I'm more than certain we're going to see see that again moving down the pike here. Um, I just want Wall Street to keep their hands off of all this stuff. I warned everybody what was going to happen to Bitcoin when Wall Street got their hands on it. I told everyone, I nailed that almost to the day. I was telling people to, you know, once the futures exchange of Bitcoin started, get out, sell it. 
I got laughed at and ridiculed. Well, let's see who's laughing now. Uh, I nailed that one, and everybody knows it. Uh, I think I'm the only one, actually. Uh, maybe there's one other guy that I can think of who uh, he's, he's a futures trader as well. I don't trade futures, but I understand the market, and I knew what was going to happen. I think people have no conception whatsoever of of the, the, the tentacles uh, that Wall Street has. And um, so as long as Wall Street keeps their hands off of cryptos, I don't want to see any ETFs with, with regard to Bitcoin or anything else. I want it to stay out of their hands, and we'll be okay. If we start seeing cryptos getting rigged by Wall Street – uh, then it's going to be time to dump all of it big time, uh, in my opinion. And I was right on, on Bitcoin, like I said, almost to the day. So when you say rig, you mean controlling the price like like they do with gold and silver, where they have a lot of paper contracts and they can dump a lot of paper contracts and bring the price of gold down. Is that what you're talking about? Oh, yeah. There are so many ways that they could, they, they rig the Bitcoin futures markets. And I, I outlined, I wrote articles about it. I told everyone exactly how they were going to do it. And very few people believed me. Um, but those that did, uh, did very, very well. And uh, I was happy to hear from many people, uh, many, many people told me, Greg, thank you. You know, I got to lock up my profit there. And everyone else is crying. And I mean, literally, I had people writing to me, scores of people that got caught up at the hype right at the top of that bubble crying. Greg, what do I do? I, I you know, I, I sold my car to buy Bitcoin at the top of the bubble. Now I have no way to get to work. I, you know, I, I, I can't believe I fell into this whole thing. Um, you know, it's, 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 it's an insane situation when people get hyped up and they get caught up into that. They make bad decisions. People were mortgaging their houses, taking out personal loans, credit cards, whatever they had to do to try to get into that that super hype on Bitcoin. I'm not saying it's not going back up. It may very well may might go back up there. But imagine how smart you would have felt. Those of you that would have sold when this guy sitting right here talking to you told you to sell it, you didn't, and you would have and you would have rebought it back at the bottom. <laughs> you know, sometimes. I have to laugh at people, and now at least I get to do that because I took so much heat for for what I had said was going to happen off of that. And when you can sit back and say you were right, well, you know what? Sometimes you got to do it, and I'm doing it right now. So where do you think we're headed um, the rest of this year? I mean, The Economist magazine, they predicted that 2018 was going to be the year of like a transition into maybe a gold-backed currency. Do you think this year we're going to see a crash or something big happen where they have to make a transition into something else? I mean, I think there was a bill that was introduced where they're introducing the bill where it says that the dollar is going to be backed by gold. And I know Rand Paul has been trying to to you know, get the audit, the Fed bill through. Uh, where do you think we're headed the rest of this year? The rest of this year is not happening this year. Um, I don't know. Look, the once we have a, a, a sound money system again, the central banks lose power. They don't want to do that. That was the whole entire reason for getting off of a gold standard. Um, and establishing the petrodollar. So they don't want it. They don't want a, a, a commodity back, um, a, a currency. They don't want it. Again, it, it's, it's got to be backed by the, the faith and credit of the bankrupt government uh, that is issuing it through the essential bank. It's garbage. It's nonsense. Again, it's not real. It's fantasy land. So, no, I don't see that happen, happening this year. In fact, I probably don't see it happening any anytime. I think when this system ends, they're going to come up with something different that will benefit them. It's not going to benefit us. None of this is set up at all whatsoever to benefit you, me, or anybody who's listening to this. It's a rigged game across the board, and it'll always be that way. It will never change. Um, they're going to, is in fact, it'll probably get a lot worse before it gets better. They're going to consolidate power. Uh, once this thing really hits the fan, and it will, I, I look at it more as a correction to fair value than a real crash. Um, and, and it's going to be epic when this, when everything is realized. But what's the value of debt that can never be paid back? 
What is the value of it? Uh, it's being it's it's held around the world, and not only is it being held around the world, derivatives of it are in in multiple forms in layers. There are layers upon layers upon layers of derivatives built on the back of the debt. So this thing is so big and so monstrous and so ugly that very few people, probably one percent of the people on this earth, really have an inkling of how bad it is. But what people see on the surface is nothing because there are so many layers of this underneath um, that, again, it's hard for someone to get their head around, but it's really the truth. But look, the, 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 main, the main thing is this. There's no utopia. There's, no, there's nothing that's going to come out of this that's going to be- benefit anybody. Unfortunately, so you got to do what you got to do now to figure out how to make the next correction to fair value because that's all the market was trying to do in 2008 it was correct to fair value was not allowed to do that. They reinflated the bubbles and they continue to, re- to inflate them now. Uh, it won't stop. In, in, until we hit uh, another a catastrophic event. But this one, again, has the potential to be much worse because the distortions are much worse. So, you know, that's it. I think that people have to understand that this is the way it is. It's just not going to stop. It's a cycle that has been repeated and over and over again throughout.